Okay, hello and welcome again. What I got here is a 4L60E. It's a 2006. Uh, the first digit is always on the General Motors is the year model. It's a 2006. The second digit is a C. So it's in a C body uh, truck. It's probably a pickup truck or a uh, Tahoe or a Suburban. Uh, and the HD, it's on one of those uh, Tahoe or Suburban. Uh, vehicles. So it's a 2006 uh, C-body 4L60E. We're going to do a, a teardown inspection on this and the first thing that we need uh, are tools. It's basic uh, tools. A10, 13, 15 millimeter sockets. A uh, little short extension. Uh, T50 and this is going to be a, a Torx Plus for the bell housing to remove the bell housing bolts. We have our uh, snap ring pliers for the snap ring that goes on the output shaft, uh, some pliers to hold the uh, servo cover, screwdriver, and then I have this long screwdriver with a notch at the end. That's to get inside the case and pull the snap ring from the center support. Uh, low reverse uh, piston spring, return spring compressor. And our little grinding tool here, I have a, a gasket remover a pad on it. That's just to uh, clean this uh, shaft before you take the manual sensor position off or digital transmission rain sensor off. And of course, your cup of coffee. All right, well, I'm gonna go get me another cup of coffee and uh, we'll start disassembling this unit. Okay, so let's go ahead and start tearing this uh, unit down. The first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna take the uh, O-ring for the turbine for the lockup uh, piston that goes in the converter. This is the uh, input shaft or the turbine shaft. We we'll remove that. Now we're going to remove uh, all the uh, pump or our bell housing bolts. Okay, so now that we remove the O-ring for the Input shaft, the torque converter, uh, clutch, uh, seal, piston, uh, O-ring. Let's go ahead and remove the bolts for the bell housing. It's a T50 uh, Torx Plus and a little extension so you can get reach in there. Especially this bolt right here. out of the way. We're going to go ahead and remove everything that's on the outside of the unit, everything external. So now we're going to move to the uh, manual lever uh, position sensor. We remove these two 13 millimeter bolts. Now we're going to remove our uh, linkage arm. And before we uh, slide this uh, transmission range sensor out from the transmission, we're going to clean the edges here. The reason for that is whenever you tighten up this uh, linkage arm on it, it kind of flares the bottom of it. And when you try to take the, the range sensor from the shaft, you end up damaging the range sensor. When you go put it back in, the indicator lights will be floating all over the place. Remove our 
clear seal. I'm going to use a screwdriver and a hammer. Always uh, bend it in inwards so I can get my screwdriver behind it and get it out of the way. Are we going to go ahead and remove our extension housing? Well, first let's remove our uh, output speed sensor. Now, if you're not familiar with your bolts, this bolt is shorter than the ones that go on the uh, uh, valve body. Uh, you're going to have uh, about seven bolts, three, six. Like nine bolts that look like this, they're a little longer. If you try to uh, install one of those uh, bolts from the valve body in here, uh, you're going to end up breaking it. It's not going to bolt all the way in. So uh, just to, uh, as a preventive measure, just install this bolt where, you know, back on the extension housing. That way you won't mix it up with the rest of the bolts. Now let's remove the extension housing. Extension housing out of the way. Now for the uh, connector, the wiring harness connector, you need a special tool to push it in. Or we're going to do it by hand. I'm going to try uh, squeezing the tabs in and tap it lightly with the hammer. Just enough so that the, tie, the, the tabs will go inside of the, of the bore. There we go. We just push it in. Now we take our uh, pump bolts. Remove them. The 13 millimeter socket. And this being an 06 model, it doesn't have a pump o-ring anymore. It has a uh, molded uh, pump uh, seal. Once we get it out, I'll, I'll show that to you. I'm going to flip this thing sideways just a little bit. Push the circle in a little bit, get, get it loose. Get a screwdriver behind the snap ring. Go around and remove it. I'm going to use this pliers to lift it up. Get your 45 degree angle pick. This is what I use. And I usually don't tear that seal up. It's best if you just uh, stretch it and pull on the cover and it comes right up. If you, if you rip the seal, sometimes it'll be real. Uh, hard and uh, brittle it'll break in there it'll make it more difficult to get it out because it's still going to be stuck on the uh, uh, snap ring groove so this is the uh, servo cover this is our uh, overdrive uh, piston servo piston and this is our second piston and uh, this is like an intermediate cover that goes in between the second and the fourth. You got second inside the end cover and the second piston on the front. And this just separates the, uh, the two. This is our return spring. Set it aside. Now that we got our servo removed, we're going to flip this thing over and remove our pan. What it looks like. 13 millimeters.
Okay, uh, yeah, we have a lot of uh, clutch material and it smells pretty bad. See all that around the magnet? Looks like converter clutch. All these little crumbs all the way around. Have a lot of real fine metal on it. Let's go ahead and uh, finish tearing this thing down and see what we're going to be able to find here. Okay, this is an 06 model. It doesn't have the uh, input speed sensors. On 07 and up, they uh, added a turbine speed sensor on the pump, and it goes wired right in here, right next to the boost valve goes the wire, and it goes into the uh, uh, inside the stator support. Now we're going to go ahead and uh, disconnect our wiring harness. This transmission is not too old, so the wiring harness is still flexible in good shape. Now on uh, earlier models, or if the transmission overheated, these clips here are just going to break off, and that's normal. I mean, they always do break. And this one's not too old, so they're coming apart in one piece. Okay, now we're going to take uh, our heat tin roller, set that aside, we're going to remove all our uh, 10 millimeter bolts, This is the 1-2 accumulator piston. One two accumulator assembly. We're gonna remove the piston. A bit of air. And it comes out. Excuse me, boss. You have a text message. Now it is very common that the piston will crack from uh, where the pin goes. This is in very good shape. There's nothing wrong with it. We'll just replace the O-ring. That'll work. Want your accumulator housing. Uh, always check it for scoring. It's a little polish, but that's okay. This is fine. This is a, a good one to accumulator housing. It's not scored. It has a plastic piston. Whenever you have an aluminum piston, it's more prone to wear at that area. Let's go ahead and remove all of our bolts. Now we're going to remove the pressure switch manifold. See these bolts right here? These are longer than the output speed sensor bolt. If you install this bolt on the output speed sensor, it will not tighten, and you, you may think that it's not going all the way in. You will force it, and you will break it. Now to remove this, always uh, twist it. You know, press and twist. The reason for that is that you have O-rings here on the pressure switches. Now they're full with gunk in there, all that black suit. Uh, they're gold in color, but when you pull it, some, the, the O-rings are stuck on the aluminum and you will bring the pressure switch with you and you will destroy it. Okay, sorry about that distraction. Turn it off. Now we remove these uh, three eight millimeter bolts. And notice the position of these three bolts, and I'm going to show you why. You need to pay attention to where they go. They are longer. If you install this bolt here, you will cause a bind up, and 
The reason for that is, is because it's longer, it goes through the barrel of the case, and it will hold the uh, sun shield stationary. So in other words, you will not have a reverse, and you will not have second, and you will not have a fourth gear, and it will cause you a lot of problems. So pay attention where these three bolts go, one here, here, and here. All right, let's move the wiring harness to the side and remove the valve body from the case. All right, so we have two shift solenoids. We have a force motor or pressure control solenoid. We have the three two down shift solenoid and the torque converter clutch pulls with modulated solenoid. I'm gonna take this cover off here. Same three bolts, same size, all the internal bolts, eight millimeter short bolts are the same. Have a return, two return springs. There's a valve in here, so we'll remove that. Always pull the pin a little bit out and then wiggle the forward accumulator. Same thing, inspect it for cracks or wear. And it's always recommended to replace this one with an aluminum one. On the older models, this is nice and white. If you see it dark yellow, it means that it's about to get destroyed or break. See another eight millimeter bolt. Remove the force motor, set it aside. There's seven check balls on the valve body. They stay in the case. Okay, this is the uh, little uh, manual valve rod. One, two, three, four, five, six. And a very common issue is that the, this check ball here gets stuck in the separator plate and it causes the band, the 2-4 band to burn. So more than likely we're gonna find that the band for second and fourth is gonna be damaged. Remove the check balls. So it's six in total here on the valve body. They you install them on the valve body and then on the case. Three more eight millimeter balls. Remove the spacer plate from the transmission. There's that check ball. See it almost went through the other side of the spacer plate. Just gonna push it. There we have it. Now this spacer plate like this, it's damaged, but there is a fix for it. Uh, they sell little fixes for the check ball to uh, fix the plate. We're gonna go through that uh, later. Set it aside. This is the 3-4 uh, accumulator return spring. We're going to remove the 3-4 accumulator piston. That's a 3-4 accumulator piston. It's aluminum. Always with the same uh, pin. Just check it for wear. Wiggle it. This is nice and tight. If it wiggles all over the place, replace the accumulator piston. Okay, let's uh, remove our uh, torque converter clutch solenoid. This is an on-off solenoid. And we remove it. It, it. It's part of the wiring harness. And now we remove the complete wiring harness. Set it aside. And there's another check ball here in the case, right here. We're gonna go ahead and remove that. You have eight check balls all together. You have one check ball captured in a little capsule. Uh, it doesn't come out. 
and then you have a third release uh, check ball capsule here and it doesn't come out all right well let's remove our pump from the case flip this thing over so you can see it and always inspect the inside of the stator support the bushings this this bushing is white if you see there is a uh, kind of chrome this is a Babbitt material bushing you see that in the front as well there's bushings uh, when you see this type of bushings on, on your transmissions always install brass bushings in it these bushings are no good they wear out fairly quickly and uh, it ends up and ends up damaging the uh, stator support and the input shaft it is very important to uh, replace all these bushings. As a matter of fact, I have another video just uh, showing the wear that the bushes create. Okay. Unanchor the band from the band anchor, from the band anchor plug, and then just pull on the drum. Here we see the uh, reverse input drum. Reverse input is in the inside and second and fourth gear this band applies here and as you can see this band is burnt is black you can see some cracks here there's some pieces missing here on the band I don't know if you can see that but well, there you go and then I'll stretch it here a little bit larger okay we're just gonna remove the assemblies first and then we're gonna disassemble the, the sub assemblies here is the output shaft and here is a snap ring we're going to go ahead and uh, use our snap ring pliers and we remove that snap ring we remove our front planet assembly always wiggle it make sure it doesn't wiggle around if it does it needs to be replaced he does have some uh, bat wing uh, washers. Just make sure that they are installed and they look in perfect health. Always uh, kind of put pressure on the capture bearing. This bearing cannot be replaced unless you disassemble the whole planet. Make sure it's not damaged. When it's damaged, you'll know it's going to be everything's going to be torn up. This is the ring gear or the planetary carrier. There's nothing wrong with the planet, so there should be nothing wrong with our carrier as well. Set that to the side. Here's another bearing. This bearing goes here. This is our sun gear shell. This goes, this plastic washer goes on top of the center support. This is a high rate failure on this unit. This, this sun shield looks good, it doesn't look worn out, but believe me, replace it. Do not reuse this sun shield because it's going to come back. They strip from here and they break from here. So even though it looks good, this is trash. We cannot use that. Reverse sun gear. Now here's the fun part. We're going to use this screwdriver with the little notch. I'm going to get this closer to the camera so you can see the notch. Uh, I'll put my glove behind it. Yeah, there you go. Yep. So you're going to use that notch to grab the snap ring. And then you're going to, you're going to pull. You're going to grab and pull. Sometimes it becomes a little difficult. You just need to get behind it. There it is uh, coming out. I don't know if you can see it there. It's partially out. I'm just going to get behind it with my fingers and remove it. Okay, now we're going to wiggle the uh, output shaft to get the rear planet out. Now we pull on it. Here we have our output shaft.
This is our center support. Low reverse uh, one-way clutch or roller assembly. Always uh, check the brace. If the brace is a little worn, your low reverse clutch is worn and it needs to be replaced. Low reverse uh, clutches. And they are also burnt. They're burnt up. Rear planted assembly, same thing here. Wiggle the pinions. They should not have any uh, side play or cock sideways. If they do, replace it even though it looks good. And if it does cock sideways, you gotta replace it. Put it to the side. Low reverse uh, cushion plate or wavy. Put that to the side. Rear planet uh, ring gear or carrier assembly, two bearing. Center support, this is an anti-clunk spring. Whenever you go from second to first gear, it, if it, this is not installed, it'll, the gear train in the back or the, the center support will, uh, will, will slap and it'll give you a clunk going uh, down into first and you will hear the clunk. This is an anti-clunk spring. It's like a cushion spring. Okay, now we're gonna drain a little bit our fluid here. If we wanna get that uh, low reverse piston out of the bottom of the case, we're gonna use that tool here. I'm going to use this sun shield as a support so that I can find the edge of the snap ring and then install it. Bear with me just a little bit, I'll get the camera over on that side. Okay. So here it is installed and the openings of the snap ring are right here. There's one opening here and one opening right there. Okay. We use the same pliers, get a comfortable position that you can get in there, get the edges, get my little hand flashlight out here, so that we can see better, you can see, I can see, we get this mapping out of here. I need to go further in, I have to wiggle. Now in order for this piston to come out, we're going to blow air through the feed hole, but we need to remove this bracket here that holds the uh, parking rod and the parking pole. And we want to do that so that the parking pole will flip to the outside. And we reinstalled this bracket and just... Uh, Thread one bolt, just partially thread it. That'll give some room for the piston to slide out once we blow it out. Okay, so we're gonna blow some air through the feed hole and it's gonna pop right out. Here we have it. Okay, so everything from the barrel of the case is removed. Now let's go ahead and disassemble our drums. Okay. Reverse input frictions. You need two components uh, for reverse. The low reverse or uh, burn up. 
and these are the reverse input. What that does, it, it gives the, uh, a reverse reaction. You have two components of uh, both opposite ends uh, holding together, and the planetary gear system starts uh, spinning on the opposite direction. These are in very good shape. They're not burned, only the low reverse friction. Here we have our input uh, bearing. And this spacer here is selectable. This is number 69, the very most common one. And uh, this is to adjust the input clearance on the input shaft. 5 to 32 or 36 dollars is acceptable on the clearance. Okay, we see that our third clutch is. Okay, let's continue here. Three, four uh, snap ring just removed. The uh, pressure plate, three or four clutches are smoked, man, look at that. Okay, so we're going to need the backing plate, we're going to need the pressure plate, and the steel plates for uh, the first clutch. Go ahead and remove our uh, forward. Clutch assembly. Two coast clutches. They're in fair shape. They have a little uh, black mark on it. Slipped a little bit. Forward clutch assembly. First gear. They're in perfect good health. They come in the kit, so we're going to go ahead and replace it. We're going to check our uh, input sprag assembly. Now before I disassemble this, I'm holding the sun gear. And the outer race is going to turn counterclockwise. And the inner race, I'm holding it because it's attached to the sun gear. But if I hold the, the, uh, the outer race, the inner race is going to turn clockwise. Clockwise, counterclockwise. It depends on how you hold it. Always hold the center and spin my outer rays counterclockwise. Let's go ahead and disassemble it. Always check it here for any signs of wear, pitting. Perfectly good. If one race is bad, the other race is going to be bad. So if one race is good, the other race is going to be good, and the spray is going to be good. You can uh, go as technical as to checking the wear and uh, over 30,000, I mean you measure it over 30,000 wear on the shiny part, uh, you need to replace it. And this rag looks in very good shape. Set that to the side, let's disassemble. Our pump assembly. Always check that the rotor does not score where it rides, where it, on, on its working area. Remember the bad bit bushings, they got to go. Install the brass bushings. And I mean inside here it's in perfect good shape. You will see some scoring marks in it. This is nice and smooth because the bushing is not completely gone. So if you want to see the damage on this bad bushings, you can go to the other video that I have and why it's important to replace the bushings. And you will see this exact same unit, well not this unit, right, but the, uh, another 4L60E that had that same issue with the input shaft and the stator support being damaged. Okay, now let's remove the rotor from the pump. 
you want to inspect the ends of the of the veins and where the rings ride. Sometimes you will see some uh, cuts on the on the sides where the the expander rings will just wear them out. It's not the issue here. They're in very good shape. Let's check the slide. The slide with time it'll turn shiny and white. This still has a little smoky color to it, which means that it's almost not new, but uh, it's not wore out. You will see some shiny ones out there, but just check it, make sure that it's not scored. You don't see no lines, you don't see no pits. If you do, you have to replace it, it's gotta go. Okay, so this is our uh, teardown for a 4L60E. Check this drone for warpage with a straight edge, and uh, they do warp. I don't know what I did with mine, but you get the point. Just put a straight edge here, put your flashlight in the back, and if you see some uh, light shining through, uh, replace it. Let me see what I can find to show you. Okay, this might not be the straightest tool, but we're gonna go ahead and uh, use it here. You put your light behind it, and if you see light coming out, I don't see any light, do you? If you see some light passing through there, then uh, your drum is warped, and you need to replace it. Okay, so here we conclude the uh, teardown inspection of this 4L60E 2006 on a C body, uh, suburban, uh, it could be suburban, it could be a Tahoe, it could be a pickup truck. It's a 2006 model. Three, four clutches are smoked. The two, four band is burnt. The spacer plate, the check ball was stuck in it. Needs a complete overhaul kit, a sun shell, all the bushings. Spacer plate we're gonna fix, I'll show you how. And, uh, and that's it. Let's go ahead and put this thing in the cooker, clean it up, and uh, after we clean it up, let's assemble it. All right? Okay, so now that we have our transmission disassembled, we need to uh, clean it up. This is the parts washer. It uses hot water and a special fluid that uh, uh, Alumacast or something like that is called. And uh, it's biodegradable, it, it's used to clean the aluminum or the cases. You can clean your hard parts in here too. I do not recommend that you clean your uh, planetary gears in here because the soap will get inside the pinions. But anything else, drums, uh, steel plates, uh, carriers, planetary carriers and all that, uh, you can wash it in here except uh, where you have valves like the pump, pump cover has uh, two valves, the pressure regulator and the lockup valve, and the valve body. Don't wash them in here, wash them in the solvent, and uh, you will have real good success. Okay, I'm not gonna go to the, all the cleaning process, I'm just gonna clean it up, come back, and uh, start assembling. So here we have it, this is ready for the wash. We just close it. Turn it off. Okay, so here we have all of our parts, most of our parts cleaned up. And we're gonna build it by section, so we're gonna do the rear first all the way to the center support. Then we're gonna rebuild another drum, and then another drum. Uh, we're gonna take it by sections. And the first thing we're gonna do is uh, the steel plates and this drum, where the drum rides, uh, we are going to use a gasket remover uh, wafer pad and we are going to resurface it just like you would normally do your uh, your brakes and if you see I mean it's perfectly in good condition but it's a little crystallized and you want to take that off here's our kit there's our sun shell our steels with both of the covers uh, here is the 2-4 band our filter, all of our frictions, and if you notice here, 
I already have the low reverse uh, frictions uh, soaking. You soak them for about five to ten minutes, and uh, just to make sure that you don't run them dry. These are our lip seals. This is our kit, our overhaul kit, our lip seals, the two uh, O-rings for the servo, accumulator uh, uh, D-rings, uh, small O-rings for the uh, wiring harness and solenoids. And this is a spring for the uh, uh, overdrive uh, servo return spring. And uh, this gets stressed out and it collapses the original one so the kit comes with one. Here's all of our uh, ceiling rings, more uh, small parts for the uh, input drum, the uh, filler tube book. This kit comes with both O-rings, with the regular O-ring, early style O-ring, and with the late model O-ring uh, molded, and you see here, that's what we have. There's the old one over there on the basket. Basically, it comes with everything. It comes with uh, a couple of seals too that are not needed. This is a late model uh, extension housing seal, and this is a Corvette seal. Front seal, regular extension housing seal. We got all the bushings here, and we got all the bushing drivers for the different uh, bushings. So like I say, uh, like I said, I mean the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna uh, resurface all of our steels, the ones that are good, even the ones that are new, we're gonna resurface them, and then after that, we're gonna go ahead and start installing all of our bushings, and then we're gonna start uh, assembling the subassembling, the subassemblies, and then installing the subassemblies in the barrel of the case. And then after after that, it's the valve body. Oh, and we're gonna install a uh, Transgo shift kit on this thing too. Okay, so uh, I guess uh, I'm gonna go ahead and remove all the bushings, and then when we get back, we go to the bushing installations, and uh, I'll show you the resurfacing of the of the rest of the steels. Okay, we're gonna remove the uh, case bushing with our uh, bushing driver. There went all the way down to the floor. And this is our new uh, case bushing. And you want to be just below flush on the opposite end inside of the barrel of the case you go ahead and flip this over I don't think you can be able to see that but there it is installed already okay so I already pre-looped pre the bottom of the case already installed the three uh, uh, rings the o-rings there or the actually square cut or leaf cut rings we're going to install there is a position see this notch right here it goes to the uh, nine o'clock position and you just drop it in there and uh, there we go and you can push it in but since I got the camera here too close to me I'm gonna just uh, with the output shaft I'm just gonna tap it in go we are bottomed out now we put our return spring get our spring compressor on top of the return spring and the, the spring compressor is is gonna latch at the uh, snap ring groove for the center support you just guide it in I have this real long uh, screwdriver, flathead screwdriver, just to kind of uh, make sure that, that your uh, return spring does not catch the uh, snap ring groove and that, you're, that you go all the way down. I'm going to back up just a little bit here so that I can get my uh, hand in there. And it's a little tricky here, but you want to latch one end and then 
I know that my hand's on the way and you can't see that. But on the opposite end, I'm going to grab it with my screwdriver. Latch one end. Okay, I got this end latched in. Just hold it with your finger. There we go. We're in. Okay. Take your uh, tool, remove your tool. Just make sure that your snap ring is all the way latched. We are. I already pre lubed the uh, bushing. Now we're going to install our uh, rear planet ring gear and our bearing is installed on the ring gear. Drop that in there. Our rear planet with the bearing. I'm going to go ahead and drop that in there. Make sure it's lines on the planetary carrier. There we go. Now our low reverse clutches, they are pre-soaked and as you see the steel plate here, uh, that uh, gasket removal tool does not, the wafer does not remove uh, metal, it just uh, gives it a couple of uh, nice grooves there for uh, lubrication. And we install our wavy first, steel plate. Clutch, another steel, another clutch, steel, clutch, steel, clutch, steel, and another clutch. Then we're going to put a dab of assembly lube on the anti-clunk spring and it's going to go at the 5 o'clock position. We're going to get our center support. This uh, wide uh, opening here goes to the uh, like the 3 to 4 o'clock position. We kind of guide it in there. Okay, washer came came undone there. I'm gonna push it down with my hammer here. Uh oh. There we go. There we go. Now we're going to rotate the low reverse race and then latch it to the low reverse planetary and push it down okay now we install our snap ring now this is the way I install my snap ring here we have the anti clunk spring I always make sure that my openings are clear from that and not on top of it not on top of it because because if it is your snap ring might pop out. You don't want that to happen. See how it is on, on top of it? I just get on the opposite direction and then uh, twist the snap ring a little bit, and there we go. Okay? So now our low reverse sun gear, sun shell, and our front planetary gear assembly. Okay, so let's install our bushings. We're going to start with the small items. I'm going to use my uh, shop press here to go down on it. I like to, to use the shop press. You can uh, smack it in like I did the uh, case bushing. But when you use the shop press, they, uh, they go in pretty straight. Like butter. There we go. So that's one. 
we're going to flip it over and we're going to install this one. Same thing. Kind of uh, have it a little flush there. Slowly get it level. Just be a little flush a little bit. Okay, so we got that one in. Set that one to the side. Install this little ones. Well, with this one, we, we need to go lower. So uh, we'll install those when we install the uh, stator ones. Now let's install the sun gear bushing. Going a long way down. Here we go. Kind of check the depth, see where you at. We're right at flush. Supposed to be like in between, like in the middle. Check it again, get it out. That is perfect. Okay, now we're going to install the drum, the reverse drum bushing, which is the rear bushing. Make sure that it's centered. Okay. Now we're going to install the rear bushing. I don't have a size for that, so I'm going to use this, uh, a larger one, oversized, and use that instead. There we go. Brand new bushings. We're going we're gonna to well, let's go ahead and install the uh, pump bushing. Okay, here it is. Long way down. Use the other pad. Get there quicker. So much easier. They go in straight. Have no issues. And you can actually control how far you want to go down. You want to be flush with that step here. And it has a uh, stop at the opposite end. That's our pump bushing. Now we're going to lower it one. We're going to do our uh, stator bushings, front and rear. The front one, we don't need a driver. Front stator bushing. Just make sure that it's all the way in. This is not the one. Okay, it is all the way down. Let's install the opposite end bushing. And for this one, we do need a driver.
just below flush. And now the little ones for the sun gear. We're going to use this installer tool here. Went too far up. Here we go again. Here, get me a little closer. Well, I'm almost all the way down. Okay, went a little bit too far down, so, uh, I kind of went up with the setup here. Let me get another one. I already got it flush. Now we're going to go down below. All right, let's get this thing centered here. Slowly. There we go. Right below flush. Let's see where we're at. Okay, right below flush. Go ahead and install the other one. Where's it at? Oh, where'd that little sucker go? Hmm. Well, I had both of them here. I don't know where the other one went. I'll go look for another one. You can also install your seals here at the press. I had already installed the uh, extension housing bushing. Now we're going to do the uh, front seal. Let's see if we can go how far high can we go here? Okay. Same thing here. There we have it. Front seal, bushings, everything on the shop press. Nice and straight, nice and even. There we have it. You can also install your seals here at the press. I had already installed the uh, extension housing bushing. Now we're going to do the uh, front seal. Let's see if we can go how far high can we go here. Okay. Same thing here. There we have it. Front seal, bushings, everything on the shop press. Nice and straight, nice and even. There we have it. Okay, well, let's continue having fun here. Next is going to be our sun gear with our brand new bushing. Our four tap plastic washer is already on there. And going to be our sun gear shell. Okay, after the sun shell, front planet ring gear, the front planet. And the output shaft. And we install our new snap ring.
get the long, long screwdriver here, make it easier. Okay, so now we have the rear of the transmission assemb assembled. We have the low reverse frictions, the low reverse uh, piston, center support, rear planet, uh, rear planetary gear assembly, uh, front planetary gear assembly. Now we are ready to assemble our drums. Okay, so we're now going to assemble the reverse input drum. And uh, first thing we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and, and loop where the uh, lip seal rides. Loop it up real good. Then we're going to install our lip seals. The piston goes into the drum this way and the lip should go down like that. When the drum fills with fluid it expands and it pushes the piston and compresses the frictions, the clutch pack. Now we install the inner lip seal in the same manner with the lip going down. We lubricate it, put some assembly lube on it. Then we drop it in the drum. We use the lip seal installer. We work it around and around until we get the lips into the bore where the piston rides. Okay, so here we have it. We're going to go ahead and uh, install our. Uh, Turn spring on our foot press, and I need to go get the uh, snap ring. Okay, so I got the camera a little bit closer. We are going to install our snap ring, which I have here in my hand, compress it in the foot press, there we go. Now we are going to install our frictions. Okay, we start with the uh, cushion spring, steel, friction, steel, friction, steel, friction, steel. We end up with the friction and the pressure plate. and with some emery cloth I uh, sanded it in the same way that it rotates inside the transmission this way. So here we have our reverse input drum already assembled. We loop our bushings up and it's ready for installation. Okay so the first thing that we're going to do here we're going to assemble the uh, input drum. I'm going to remove the uh, 
an O-ring that it has in here, the green O-ring. So once we discarded the O-ring, we're going to install a new one, which is this one. And then we're going to install the seal that seals the front loop to the rear loop circuit. We install that. We lubricate where the third clutch uh, molded piston is going to go. Lubricate the round o-ring and all the surfaces where the inner lip seals for the molded pistons are going to, uh, or their working area. So here you see that I lubricated those areas in there. Now we install the uh, third clutch molded piston. Now this we're going to install it as an assembly. So we're going to install the forward piston first on the uh, forward piston housing. Install it as an assembly. We're going to use our tool here for the inner lip seal. We guide it in there. We don't let it fall, hold it with one finger. We hold that crown with one finger, one of the legs. I'm holding it with my uh, left thumb. And then we just guide the piston in there. And here we have the forward uh, molded piston and piston housing and the third clutch uh, crown there that compresses the third frictions. Now we install the forward piston, forward clutch piston, our return spring, we get our foot press here ready to compress. Now we install our snap ring. Okay. Okay. So there we have it. Now we're going to uh, get this to the side that we had it. And we're going to begin with the uh, stack up. So we put this bearing here. Now we assemble our forward uh, sprag assembly. We put one of the races in. We get the uh, sprag assembly on the inner race and we put it in the position where it's supposed to rotate. I hold the inner and then the outer is supposed to work counterclockwise. And this is the way I installed it. Rotate it, push it in. Inner sun gear, hold counterclockwise, the other uh, spread guide, put it in here, remove the snap ring, install a, our coast clutch hub, hold the sun gear counterclockwise. Now we're going to install our frictions. Install with one uh, coast clutch steel plate, one friction, another steel plate, another friction, the pressure plate for the coast clutch. Now this is the wavy plate for the forward clutch. Install our uh, sprag assembly. Into the drum, it should sit right on top of that bearing. Steel plate, the friction, another steel plate, another friction, steel, 
friction, steel. It takes five frictions for the forward clutch. And I just noticed on the kit, I received uh, 4L65 uh, frictions for the uh, 34 clutch. And I'm working on the 4L60E. The difference is that the 4L65s are thinner. This is a 2006 model. 2007 and up, you got 4L60 and 4L65s. Now the frictions are real thin. I had some, uh, this is the seventh friction. Came with seven, they're thin. I had some coiheen, uh, two different sizes. Uh, steels, these are for racing. It's not going to affect anything. I mean, it's only going to, we're only going to use it to add that extra uh, friction just in case we need it. So we're going to go ahead and do the stack up here and try to adjust accordingly. The way I like my uh, pressure plate is to be right flush with the snap ring groove. And uh, we're going to try to uh, accomplish that. This is the sixth friction and it's a thin friction. Now we're going to install our pressure plate to see how low it is. And yes, it's a little low. I'm going to install a thin, well I have a thin regular uh, steel here. I'm going to install the seventh friction and see where we're at. If we're too high, which we are too high, we're above the snap ring groove. I'm going to get one of the thin coiling steels, remove one of the thick steels, this is a thin one, install it, and that should bring my clearance a little below. And we are at flush. That's what we want to accomplish. We want to be flush with the snap ring. Okay, so here we have it with the snap ring already installed. And I know the frictions are wet. It's kind of hard to rotate. But they should rotate freely. If you were uh, uh, stacking this drum dry, uh, they would be floating there all over the place. And uh, that's the way, that's what, we, what we're looking for. It was right at the snap ring groove. If I take the snap ring off, I got my, the camera on one hand, but I took it off the tripod. I'm going to see if I can get the snap ring off. It might pop out, which is no big deal. It's only me and you here. But if you see here, we're right at the groove. We're a little bit above. I'm going to see if I can get another thin uh, steel plate and uh, retry. Let's see here. Remove the pressure plate. This is the regular thin steel. Now we have the uh, thin coiling, which is a black in natural color. And then we have, this is a regular thick steel. So put that to the side. And we get, actually this is another thick uh, coiling. Okay, we have a thin one here. Now let's see what we're going to be able to accomplish here. Let's do the stack up again, and we want to be right at flush, and if it's below flush, that is not a hell of a lot. Now let's get a little closer here. We are, we're flush man. We are flush a little below, but that's the perfect clearance that I use all the time. You can get your uh, specifications, you can get the book out if you want to, but this is perfect for me. And it works perfect. You have a lot of free slack and nice clearance. It's about maybe 35, I think 65 clearance will be perfect for this. But always leave it, leave the pressure plate at flush 
with the snap ring groove and you still have a lot of play there to play with I don't like it too tight because then it'll drag uh, on a kick down and with time they will get burn up okay so now we're going to install our ceiling rings we're going to remove the old ones I'm just using a regular pick to rip them off Here we get them off, the old seating rings. We're going to use an, uh, an ex expander tool. We're going to expand the seating rings. And uh, a resizer. This is as far as it goes because it's a large shaft. On the earlier models, it goes all the way down. You just slide your seating ring. Then you position it on the first groove, kind of work it in the groove. Kind of like that, you know, a little bit centered. Then you get your resizer and carefully uh, slide it in there. And that should resize your uh, ceiling rings. Now we're going to put our, our spacer. And our bearing. And we're going to use our uh, stator just to try it in. Put a little bit of assembly lube on the seating ring. It's already being resized. We just want to make sure that it's sized correctly. There we go. That's one. Got three more to go. Same thing, put our resizer, our expander tool, to expand the seating ring, work it in the groove. It expands it quite a bit. It gets quite large. Kind of got to work it in the groove and then get your resizer. Carefully make sure that it's in the groove. Doesn't go outside the groove. If it does go outside the groove, you may damage the seating ring. Same thing, resize it, do the next one, here you see the groove, Just kind of work it, see how it is very enlarged, you kind of work it inside the groove, make sure that it's inside the groove. then resize it. You gotta go around see how this is uh, real expanded. Work it inside the groove. You should slide down. There we go. If you feel that it stops, you gotta uh, position the ceiling ring inside the groove. Our fourth one. Work it in the groove, all the way around. Get your resizer, make sure that it's inside the groove. Slide our stator. And there it is. Resize. Now that it's been resized, go ahead and lube it, lube it up. Reinstall our stator. Now we put the reverse input drum on top of the input drum until it's all the way down. You can feel a, you can feel the solid. Now we can we can install it inside of the barrel of the case. You wiggle it. And the way you want to wiggle it is because you want those uh, clutches to engage on the front planetary gear assembly. It's all the way down. The reverse input drum sits on top of the, on top of the sun shell. 
and you should have the input drum free like this. It should come up and down. That tells you that your drum is all the way bottomed out. Now that we had a, our uh, band soaking the fluid, you go ahead and install it. Drop it down a little bit. Then get your uh, screwdriver and this piece right here, this uh, you're going to anchor it on the uh, band anchor plug. And make sure that it is latched in on the band anchor plug. There we go. Now the next thing is the pump. Then from the pump we move to the to the servo and then our valve body. Okay, let's go to see that our band is latched on our band anchor plug. That's our band. The servo goes in here and it breaks the uh, reverse input drum. And when it breaks the drum, it stops the drum from spinning. You have second and fourth gear application through the band. And the inside of the frictions are the reverse input uh, frictions. So it's reverse input and two four on the outside. Okay, so now let's move on to the next uh, great big thing. Okay, now we're going to work on the valve body. There's a couple of valves that you need to pay attention. Uh, they do get hung up, not very often. You got the uh, accumulator valve. I already have all the valves out. Not all of them, but most of the valves that you need to uh, pay attention to. We have the TCC isolator valve here. We have the uh, three, four upshift or overdrive uh, valve train here. The three, two downshift. This spring likes to break. Always check it. This is our accumulator valve and plunger. This likes to get stuck. There's our spring here. And our two shift solenoid valve trains. This is the TCC valve that goes inside the pump. This is the pressure regulator valve that goes inside the pump as well. A pump filter, the boost valve. Always check that it's uh, nice and free and always go back with it nice and clean. So that's what we need to be worrying about this uh, on this valve body here. Now on the isolator valve, let's go ahead and, and start looping everything so we can start assembling our valve body here. Okay. Now I want to show you one thing here. This is off of a uh, Transgo shift kit. This is the TCC isolator valve. Now, we're not gonna install the shift kit in this one, but I'm gonna just co show you something to, for comparison. The TCC isolator valve with the spring. This is the Transgo one. This is the original TCC isolator valve and the spring. On the early models, on the kit is supplied with a spring TCC isolator spring uh, to eliminate the P1870 uh, transmission component slipping trouble code. Now what we're going to do here we're going to uh, install this valve exactly like this and how are we going to accomplish that? Well it's very simple we're going to flip this valve like this we're going to, going to install the spring first then this plunger and then this valve last. And if you look at it, I mean, it is for well, the, the spring fell. But if you look at both valves like this, here's the spring, and let me pick up the spring. 
we are actually creating the same setup here by doing this. And this is going to take care of the uh, 1870 uh, trouble code, P1870, transmission component slipping. Uh, normally the TCC isolator valve gets worn up and uh, gets hung up and it gives you the P1870. And it goes right in here. Install our uh, end plug and our clip. Now in order to do this setup here, we're going to have to enlarge two holes here uh, on the separator plate, just like uh, they show you on the shift kit. Uh, not, uh, 96 thousandths of an inch, I have a 92 thousandths drill bit, that's what we're going to use. We're going to enlarge this hole and we're going to enlarge this hole. These two holes, this is for the TCC isolator valve and this is for the uh, three two downshift uh, valve. No, this is this is for the uh, actuator feed limit valve. Okay, so we're gonna enlarge these two holes for uh, ninety two thousandths of an inch. So here we have that. Now let's go ahead and install our uh, three four upshift valve. This is a steel valve, and sometimes the steel valves get more hung up than the uh, the valves that, that are made from anodized aluminum. Drop them in the in the bore. I think the spring didn't go all the way in. Let's check this thing here right quick. Okay. Yes. You went a little bit sideways. It's two sizes, so it has to go fairly straight all the way down. Get it up a little bit and redo it again. There we go, push it a little bit. There we go. The valve is two sizes, so uh, you got a little bit hung up there. Cock sideways a little bit. All right, now for the other valve. Now this one here, you just got to be careful which way you put it, you install it. If you put it backwards, you're not going to have no 3-4 uh, upshift. Can we move it up a little bit? Remember this is a steel valve. And you just want to work that valve here. See how it floats? If you feel dragging, uh, you know what to do, get your bench buddy and work that board. Now we're going to install our uh, end plug. And our clip. So there we have our 3-4 upshift valve. Nice and free. The TCC isolator valve. This is the actuator feed limit valve. So now we're going to install the uh, accumulator valve. And on the shift kit, uh, it asks you for some letter markings. This is a DX, and then you match the, the spring that comes in the shift kit for your servo. But we're not installing the shift kit on this one, so we're going to uh, assemble it as, it as it came in. Okay. There we have that. And now our uh, shift solenoid valves. This is a free floating valve. There it went all the way down to the bore. You just want to make sure that these valves are perfectly free. This is what makes the transmission shift, and it is very important. Now we're going to change the O-rings on our solenoids. On this kit, uh, it comes with green O-rings instead of black for easy identification. Now we install our uh, clip. Now this uh, shift solenoid valve has a spring, which it makes it a little bit more difficult for it to uh, get hung up. The free-floating valves are 
easier to get it uh, stuck inside their bore so if there's any metal contamination in the unit. And as if you remember the way the pan looked on this one, it was contaminated. This will prevent a lot of issues. Now we're going to install the 3-2 downshift valve. Okay. And the 3-2 downshift solenoid is the white in color or the bone color. And this one actually turns yellow or orange with age. Got two O-rings. Always replace the O-rings, especially on this one. This one right here is actually the end plug for the valve. So the valve just drops in there and this solenoid uh, is the one that holds that valve. You see here it wants to come out on its own. And put our clip. And this is our torque converter clutch pulse width modulated solenoid or TCC PWM for short. It's gray connector and gray body. Put our O-rings. Okay, so here you see the two O-rings. Loop it up. Install it in the bore. Let's put our clip in. We're almost done here. Okay, so now we're going to put our, this is the forward accumulator. We're going to install the new uh, D-ring or leaf cut seal. And you have three uh, D-rings in here. You have one for the 1-2 accumulator, one for the 3-4 accumulator, and one for the forward accumulator. The forward accumulator is smaller in size and it has a yellow marking on it. Go ahead and loop it up. You're going to loop up the bore as well. For easier installation, now we put our uh, pin and we just push it in. Now we install this valve here, low control valve. We're going to need three bolts. Remember I told you about the uh, output speed sensor bolt? These are a little longer. Two springs, the forward accumulator and the low control valve spring. We're going to go ahead and, and install them and install the cover. Eight millimeter socket. motor or pressure control solenoid. Here's our solenoid bracket. Another bolt exactly like it. Now this one here it has two notches, two positions and on the H3 Hummers it goes up like this because the pan has a, a, a cutout for where the front drive shaft goes through, but on this one, it's gonna to go to the side. And the filter is also different on the H3 Hummer to accommodate for this connector to go up. If, if you use a regular filter on a Hummer, or if you actually if you put this connector up here, like the Hummer goes, uh, the filter will not uh, sit correctly on the valve body. Okay, so there we have that. 
And this valve body takes seven check bolts. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, install new check bolts. Come in this little baggie here. It's one, two, three, four. This one did not fall in the bore. There we go. Five, six, and seven. We have one left over. This one goes on the case. Okay. Now I'm going to put a little bit of assembly lube on it to hold them together because whenever you're going to install it on the valve on the on the transmission, it's going to be upside down. So I'm going to put some uh, assembly lube on it just to hold them in place. And then I'm going to get it closer to the camera so that you can see all the seven locations where this uh, check balls go. Okay, seven check balls. And our manual lamp. So here we have it. We have seven check balls. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And remember this check ball. This check ball was stuck in the separator plate. And when it's stuck in separator plate, you're gonna use a one quarter drill bit uh, to enlarge the hole. And then you're gonna install this, uh, this little uh, gadget here. It has a snap ring on the rear. And if it's stuck on it, I mean, you just file it flush on, on both sides. And sometimes you don't even have to drill the hole because uh, the check balls are one quarter in size. So it's already up to size, you just gotta clean up uh, both edges and then install that. And that is, that is this here. Bell body plate ball seal. That's what it is. There's the little snap ring, and you see here, here's the snap ring. There's the snap ring, and those are the little inserts that you put there, that you install there. And this is actually probably a uh, uh, Transtar part number, but this is what it is. It's a fits all DB-101, DB-101. Okay, so there we have it. Now we're going to go ahead and drill the two holes that I mentioned. I'm going to go ahead and uh, grab that drill bit. It's 96 thousandths. I have a 92 thousandths or 332. That's one. That's two. And we're going to bring it up to size. This is the third clutch. We're not going to do the second or, or the fourth uh, clutch apply. And the reason for that, we're not doing a shift kit, but we are going to do the third gear and the lockup, the isolator valve. So there we have it. Make sure you blow all the debris, or the, all, all the metal debris while cutting that. So there we have the valve body. Now we are going to move to assemble the pump. Okay, it's time to uh, start working on our pump. And the first thing we're gonna do, we already put the new bushing, new seal. Now we're going to install the retainer. And this retainer is for the seal, won't pop out. So you won't have a front seal blowout. We're going to lubricate the pump bushing. Now we're going to install the, the pivot, the slide pivot. It takes a little spring first. Now we get our slide. We put a little bit of assembly lube here. 
install the new o-ring that goes in between here and then we install the sealing ring or the seal and what the o-ring does it just creates a uh, like a spring type action on the seal to seal the bottom of the slide now we go ahead and sit the slide down and we get these two little items here hope I don't they don't fall off it's a little round piece of rubber with a Teflon uh, little uh, washer here or a slide and again the rubber deal acts as a spring for the Teflon slider uh, to create a great seal a real good seal and now we install our pivot our pivot pin get it in the bore actually I, I compress this so I can have enough room to get it in there now we tap it in and the way this works the green Teflon uh, washer it's it actually acts as a washer or as a slide for the slide to go to the low volume and the high volume position and then you have your uh, pivot there and that's the way it goes now this being a 06 model it has a single uh, spring the early models 04 and down I believe it was 05 or 04 and down has a double spring it's a little bit stiff so you got to be careful when you're installing it there's a special tool for it but I'm gonna go ahead and just use my screwdriver and get it in here okay so now that we got that taken care of I use this little uh, 1460 uh, reverse reaction drum as a uh, as a tool now we're going to put our uh, they call this a snowflake but it's a rotor uh, guide that uh, actually centers the, the rotor that's why you have this little step here and this actually uh, centers it so we install this uh, rotor guide inside the rotor on the rear of the rotor we get one of these rings expander rings drop it in there and then drop in our rotor And now we're going to install uh, 13 vanes, little squares. We already have one expander ring on the bottom. The rotor guide. Sometimes you find out that the uh, converter uh, went out and uh, got severely hot that that rotor guide melts. All these items are available separately these little veins are available on their own the guide is available on their own and they also have a pump kit complete with the slide now we install the top one now we're going to set this to the side because we're going to go ahead and assemble uh, the valves that are going in the uh, pump cover that's our pump body where the pump rotor goes and this is actually our pump cover the pump body goes to the outside of the transmission and the pump cover goes towards the inside of the transmission okay so now we're going to install our four converter clutch apply valve and our spring this is a little different from the earlier models on the earlier models uh, the valve looked a little different and you had two uh, ends that looked alike and you had two springs, double springs. This valve changed, it now has a pocket and the spring goes inside the pocket. I like this stuff, it works really, really good. Now we drop the TCC apply valve in the bore. Now 
normal little washer like you see on the early models. This did not change. And of course, your uh, snap ring. Get our snap ring pliers in here. It's a very small snap ring. Get this thing in the groove. There we go. We got it in the groove. And here you have the, the bleed hole. It's bleeding off all the time. And the solenoid is normally open. When the solenoid energizes, it blocks the fluid flow. It strokes the valve and you have torque converter clutch applied. Now we're going to install this uh, screen here. Don't forget that, otherwise you're going to have most of the pressure build up from here is going to dump out from the rotor. Now we're going to install our pressure regulator valve. A little bit of lube. You can use whatever loop you want, WD-40 works well, I don't get too technical with that, it works perfect for me, and that's what I use. Now we install our boost valve, and I don't have nothing, uh, assembly loop on the boost, boost valve to hold it, so uh, I'm going to use a little pressure like this, I'm going to get my uh, snap ring on my pliers, we're going to go in sideways like this. And the pump did, did actually change in this year. This pump is a little different than the early, early model. Always like to hit the boost valve like this, just to make sure that the snapping is not going to pop out. So here we have it. Boost valve, uh, pressure regulator valve, spring, the TCC uh, ply valve, and of course the bushings. You remember that? We installed these bushings. And now we're going to go ahead and uh, install it on our uh, pump cover. Put it in there. Get five bolts. pump alignment tool to align it. Align both halves, otherwise they're, you're going to have a lot of trouble uh, trying to install it in the case on the transmission. Just make sure that your holes are aligned. Okay, there we go. We are aligned. Tighten up your band. You can use a big uh, clamp, a hose clamp, if you have a big clamp that uh, work here. That's just a screwdriver. That little impact there. It's not even an impact. It's just a screwdriver. It doesn't tighten up the bolt, so don't trust that. Just torque him. All your five holes, five holes. Okay, now we put our pump washer. Put it down with assembly loop to hold it in place. Okay, I already tried to resize these rings. I hope we don't have an issue with the new bushing. Sometimes you have to resize them a couple of times, these rings, because the pump will not slide down and you don't want to rip those rings. Only one pair comes in the kit, but you can also get them separate. You can also install 700 R4 uh, seating rings, they're blue in color. And they're not resizable, they're the ones that uh, they already pre-cut. They work, they work good. 
just in case you rip them, you can have some extra. And we're hoping that we don't need that. Not today. Not today, at least. So there we have it. Our pump, 4L68 pump, already assembled. 2006 model. Valve body and pump. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, assemble our 2-4 servo. We're going to go ahead and uh, start with the uh, O-rings. That's the cover O-ring. That's the separator O-ring. Now what we're going to do, we're going to install our servo pin. We put our uh, cushion spring. That's our servo pin. Now I'm going to just put this upside down first. I'm going to take it to my foot press to install this nap ring right quick. Okay, I have the snap ring already installed. Remove that. Now here is the new uh, servo pin spring and this is the original one. This spring uh, with age and time it stresses out and when it gets hot it stays compressed it, and it doesn't release the pin from the band and causes the band to, dr to drag on the uh, drum and wears out uh, the pump quicker and you will have a premature failure on the 2-4 band. So we install this new one the washer. You kind of compress the spring a little bit to get that clip on its groove and there we have it. Sometimes you will have some servos that the pin is uh, actually loose and the reason for that being loose is because this spring is already compressed. So always install a new one. If it doesn't come in the kit, get it separately. It is available separately on its own. Call your part supplier, find out, get some more information, and uh, they should be able to help you. That's what they're there for. This is all of our uh, ceiling rings. We're going to go ahead and install our ceiling rings on our servo. And if, if you notice here, I didn't put uh, assembly loop all the way around. I just put assembly loop on the uh, where the two ends meet. Now this one, this uh, comes with four, there's four different types of servos. This servo here, you have the smaller one which is the Corvette or 4x4 C71 servo. And then you have the one after that. Uh, this is a new type, it, it comes uh, on the newer uh, vehicles. And then you would have the normal one, this one, which would be the 553 servo. So before you only had this one in the Corvette servo. The Corvette servo is too firm for second gear. And uh, sometimes uh, you will have a third gear flare and then you put a Corvette servo, you take care of the third gear flare, but second gear is a little bit too firm. So uh, it is available the, in between the, this, the 553 and the Corvette servo. It is available through the dealership only, as, as far as I know, because it's a new, it's a new size, it's a new servo. Overdrive uh, piston, servo piston, and our overdrive uh, servo piston seating ring. There's only one size for this. Go ahead and put this on the cover. Install it like so, and. Here we do put a lot of assembly lube, make it easier to go inside the case, easier for assembly. Okay, so there we have it, 2-4 servo assembly, and this is our return spring, don't forget that. This return spring keeps the servo, when it's not in the applied position, keeps it away from dragging on the band. 2-4 servo 4L60. Okay, so I already put the pump assembly 
inside the cage, put the pump gasket, and then slid my uh, pump down, and it slid fairly easily. Uh, I don't have the uh, uh, pump o-ring on this, and I use this just to align my uh, bolt holes. I already installed my uh, turbine uh, shaft seal, and uh, all the pump uh, bolts, they take uh, o-ring. It already has all new o-rings in it. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put all of my pump bolts on the pump. I'll drive them in. Get it started a little bit. You should be able to turn it fairly easily by hand and pick it up. It has a very tight tolerance clearance. Now we're going to install, this is the early model pump uh, o-ring and this is the late model. The late model you put the pump in first then you slide this in there and then the bell housing uh, compresses that but before we do that I'm going to go ahead and torque my uh, pump bolts real quick and then we're going to go in then we install our uh, bell housing Now that I have my uh, torque wrench on my hand, I just remembered that one of you guys asked me what part number was this uh, torque wrench. It's, I bought it from Mac Tools, TWXA 100 F as in Frank and D as in David. TWXA 100 FD. Works pretty good, I like it. Okay, now we put our bell housing on it. These are Torx Plus, and trust me, if you're going to do one of these and you don't have that socket, you better get one, because once you strip those bolts, they're nice and tight, you're going to have trouble getting them out. So get your Torx Plus uh, socket. Start your bolts, all of them, and then start tightening them up. Okay, and then you torque them to 33 pounds, the bell housing bolts. Let's go get the servo. Okay, now we're going to install, install our servo. The first thing we're going to do, I put some uh, assembly lube on the return spring just to hold it together in place in there. And now we install our 2-4 uh, servo assembly into the case. I'm going to go ahead and push in it. I'm going to get my hammer here and just push and then you hold it I don't know if I got there in your way there on the camera but I hope you're catching everything here and then we install our snap ring get your screwdriver make sure that your snap ring is all the way in which it is and you should have a little a little slack there so there we have it 2-4 servo installed and uh, let's go ahead and uh, apply the 2-4 servo. Here we have our blow gun. There we 
you have it. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish this little puppy here. Warren L68 2006. Remember that leftover check ball? That one goes here in the case. Now we're going to install our 3 4 uh, accumulator pin, our 3 4 accumulator, and our 3 4 accumulator return spring. Now we're going to install the, the bolt that we took off. Uh, to remove our low reverse, here's, here's it is, right here. Okay, now we're going to install our spatial plate and valve body gaskets. And they are marked, if you see here, the V and the B, that's valve body. And the C and the A, that's a case gasket. So the case gasket goes first. Then our spacer plate. Then our valve body gasket. And these are E4OD valve body uh, alignment pins, and I use them as tools. So I'm going to put one here, and I'm going to put one here. Whenever you get your shift kit on the on the on the paper, these are called the Z bolts, and I don't know why they named it like that, but uh, they're actually your alignment uh, holes. This is going this is going to center your spacer plate to the valve body or to the case and all your bolt holes the threads are going to be aligned here is the second clutch uh, uh, check ball remember that it was stuck in the in the plate so there we have that now here i already, already uh, pre-assembled this to put the two springs in it a new uh, d-ring and our one two accumulator installed in the one two accumulator housing takes one long bolt and two short ones And always don't forget to tighten up this little uh, plate here. If you do forget to tighten it up, you're not going to have any reverse. This clamps down the ceiling area where the low reverse uh, piston applies. So don't forget that. Eight millimeter bolts. Ten millimeter. I have already uh, installed the two new O-rings on the uh, wiring harness, and the new filter came also in the kit. This is for the late model, and on the early model, this is the filter but this one actually goes on the case not on the solenoid itself on the 95 model only but the new wiring harness already come with that style of uh, filter for the solenoid install two bolts here and then remove our guide pins Put them back on our uh, magnet here. I'm gonna set this to the side. And before we forget, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, torque the bolts. And he has memory, nine pounds. There we go. And you now I need my uh, 10 millimeter socket. Install our uh, manual valve latch. Install our valve body, nine check balls, 
one in the check, the eight check balls, seven check balls here, and one in the case, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. You hold it with assembly loop because you're gonna go, you're gonna do this. Now we latch our uh, manual valve, latch to our manual valve, sit it on the case, install our pressure switch manifold, made in Mexico. It's a new one by the way. We're gonna just guide our bolts. Now this one doesn't have a, a filler tube uh, stop. It's a 06 model. The pan already has the, the indentation on it. Remember these three eight millimeter bolts, longer than the rest of them. See they're longer. Remember the position. One here, one here, and one there. Let's go ahead and uh, finish installing all of our uh, 10 millimeter bolts. I hope this video is not too long for you guys. And then another short one here. But this is what it takes to rebuild the unit. It's probably going to be more than an hour long. But it did not take me an hour. It took me more than that. And remember the two guide bolts is this one and that one. V10 rotor. I always leave it ready on the neutral position. That way when I install the neutral safety switch or the manual lever precision sensor it's already uh, in position. We get our torque wrench. Like I say, that little screwdriver does not tighten up the bolts, it just uh, gets them closer. Make sure that you tighten, it, tighten them properly, torque them properly. Let's see, did I do this one? I think I did, yeah. Now our eight. Now we connect our wiring harness. This little tab here goes underneath the pressure switch manifold. I don't know if you can see the little cutout right there. That's where it goes. Put it to downshift solenoid on your left. No, this is the TCC PWM solenoid on your left. Put it to downshift solenoid on your right. Pressure switch manifold assembly. And both uh, shift solenoids. A and B. Get this in position. Our force motor or uh, electronic pressure control solenoid. Lube up our filter. Our pan gasket. Install our extension housing. Now we're going to uh, remove that bolt. New o ring on the uh, output speed sensor.
install in on our case and go get the bolts. Six 15 millimeter bolts. Ranch did his job there. There we have it. Now we go get the transmission pan and install the transmission pan on it. Transmission pan nice and clean, the magnet nice and clean. I like to start all of my bolts first before I tighten them up. Right, just below the inside, the outside has still a little bit of water from the machine. Remember I, I mentioned that uh, the valve body does not have a filler tube stop. That's what this is. This lower indentation on that uh, transmission pan. This is the uh, dipstick stop. If you don't install a dipstick stop on, uh, on these transmissions, you're going to underfill your transmission and it's going to create issues. Probably going to slip or do some other crazy things that uh, you might misdiagnose this and uh, think that it's going to be something different. And all it is is probably maybe like a cord low on fluid. That dipstick is pretty long and it has to stop for the correct and proper fluid level. opposite end of the transmission. Right now I'll bring the camera over. We're going to go ahead and uh, change the shift lever seal and install our uh, digital transmission range sensor or manual lever position sensor or how a lot of people like to call it neutral safety switch. They call it for different names but it's the same thing. Some are digital, some are analog. This happens to be a digital one. Analog is a voltage drop type resistor. And a digital, it just uh, either open, the contacts either are open or closed, or high or low. That's how the computer looks at it. Yes, I know it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work to uh, torque everything, but. 
You can't be without it, man. You know what I'm saying? All right. So there we have it. Now let's move to the side of the transmission and uh, put our shift lever seal and manual lever position sensor, DTR sensor, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so I have this uh, shift lever seal remover removal tool. I'm gonna get it in there, and I'll get my uh, impact screw it in. Get my uh, extractor bolt. So here we have it. Removed the shift lever seal. This is our new shift lever seal. Go ahead and install it with a twist in motion. This is the shift lever seal installer tool. You can get a socket that fits it if you lose it. And now we install our uh, digital transmission range sensor. And I'm going to have to install it later because my uh, folding, fi folding fixture is in the way. Woo! Okay, so here we have our finished product. So after a lot of cup of coffee and uh, a little bit of patience, it is a lot of work and a lot of trouble, you know, trying to film these videos for you guys. But I mean, I'll do all my best to get them out there to you. And if you have any questions uh, or anything that you would like to see, or if you would like to see uh, any more videos like this, or for me to produce uh, certain type of videos diagnostic videos or whatever just leave your comments down down below and uh, this is 2013 so uh, we're gonna do things a little bit different uh, I always have a lot of uh, work and I don't have a lot of time sometimes but I'm gonna try to dedicate a little bit of time and just answer your questions I may do it on the weekend and then post the video answering most of you guys questions so uh, I mean feel free to give your positive comments I mean if you know of other fixes that if somebody asked a question down on the uh, comment section and if you happen to know the answer for that question just go ahead and give them the answer and uh, sometimes I uh, cannot be on the computer and then me building transmissions all day long uh, so if you have the answer just go ahead and share it with everybody these videos are for you guys I mean these videos are for free I'm not charging you anything for them so uh, I'm sharing this my knowledge with you your knowledge as a technician uh, share it with other techs, younger techs that uh, they want to know more about transmission repair and transmission diagnosis. And uh, I know I keep forgetting to be, uh, put my part numbers, you know, where I get it, where I get my parts from and, you know, things like that. But just bear with me, I will get some time and uh, gather all, everything together. Just ask the question, I'll read it, and then maybe one day a week, I'll try to answer you guys' questions. Okay, so uh, my name is Hiram, and uh, I mean, uh, subscribe to you know my channel and uh, share my videos with you. You can share them in your Facebook.